Rocky Jones. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Space Ranger. Starring Richard Crane. In The Silver Needle in the Sky, Chapter 1. Marshal, we'd better have a final charting conference with Rocky Jones before making any more calculations on this flight. Ask Rocky to come in. Yes, Mr. Secretary. May I speak with you, Secretary Drake? It's very important. Of course, Vina. Always glad to see you. What's on your mind? Uh, see if you can find Rocky, will you, Marshal? Yes, sir. Now, Tina, go ahead. <laughs> well, what do you want me to do about it? About what, sir? Oh, then you know why I came. I've been expecting you. It's about Rocky's flight, isn't it? Please, Mr. Secretary, assign me as navigator. Do you know exactly what Rocky's mission is? Yes, sir. Carrying the space ambassadors to the Interplanet Peace Conference. Vina. This mission involves the greatest responsibility. I realize that, sir. The passengers are the top diplomats and scientists in our solar system. For this reason, Dina, I want Rocky to select his own navigator. But I'm an interpreter, too. Oh, they don't need an interpreter, Dina. Our own space ambassador, Dr. Tyson, speaks all languages fluently. Oh. And since the conference is taking place in neutral territory, the universal language will be spoken. Sent for me, sir? Well, I called for Rocky Jones and three men arrived. <laughs> but I'm glad you're all here. I want to discuss the final charting of the conference flight. Will you step this way, please? The conference is to take place on a space station. It is the X07 in the orbit of Paratane, a planetoid in the Jupiter equilateral. A neutral area? Uh -huh. Purposely chosen for security reasons. Well, will the outlaw planets respect this neutrality? I sincerely hope so, Winky, since ambassadors are arriving from every part of the universe. When do we blast off, sir? At dawn tomorrow. You'll need a navigator for this trip, won't you, sir? I've already selected my crew. Don't forget to pack your lipstick, ma'am. Don't worry, I will. That's more important to me than oxygen. Never go any place without women, especially out of this world. <laughs> Rocky, these are the most important passengers you've ever had. Their safety depends entirely on you. I understand, sir. And now I'd like you to meet them and give them a final briefing. Hey, what about me? Well, gentlemen, that's about all. Blast off time will be at dawn. I hope we have smooth sailing. Are there any questions, Dr. Tyson? None, thank you. I want you to know we consider it a privilege to have Rocky Jones pilot us to the Interplanet Conference. Well, thank you, sir. Now may I suggest some sleep for our distinguished passengers? Hey, haven't you forgotten something? Forgotten something? Let me see. Charting instructions, passenger list, co-pilot, navigator. No, I don't think so. Galloping galaxies. If I'm to be your junior lieutenant, I can't be left behind. Oh, yes, the uh, junior lieutenant. You see, Dr. Tyson, sir, I'm an expert at keeping the ship's log. Well, now, it seems to me that keeping the ship's log is a matter of extreme importance. And you'll be too busy, Rocky. Bobby. Report to the orbit jet as keeper of the ship's log. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Winky. After we leave the ambassadors on space station X07, we'll go to Paratane to refuel. Then we'll pick them up later for the return flight to Earth. Sounds like a pretty dull trip. Mind if I bring along some books to read? 
It's a long way from the space station to Paratane. Plenty can happen. And probably will, too. That's why you need me along. <laughs> oh, Winky, double check the equipment. And don't overlook an extra supply of armament rockets. Right. They dare have an interplanet conference without me. Cleo Lanta. Our powerful suzerain is a planet officious. They could at least have had the courtesy to invite me. But Cleo, I... Cleo Lanta speaking. Satellite 12, Garbert speaking. Yes, Garbart. I'm relaying a message from Duveen, our spy on the planet Earth. Yes, yes, what is it? Duveen reports Rocky Jones will fly Dr. Hillary Tyson and three other space ambassadors to the conference. Rocky Jones. On space station XO7 in the Paratane group. Send Duveen code message 96. He's to carry out my instructions immediately. Yes, clear letter. I'll stand by for Duveen's report. Out. If I'm not mistaken, space station XO7 is in neutral territory. Here. I don't intend to wait until they get into neutral territory. Code message 96 orders Duveen to blow up the orbit jet with everybody on board. I've already figured the distance. Vina will have you know that she's the best navigator in the entire universe. Am I reasonably right, Vina? I'd say you were astronomically astute, Wiki. What can that idiot Duveen be doing? Not a word since I relayed my 9-6 code message. Maybe the message didn't get through to him. Satellite 12. Come in, Garbart. Come in. Go ahead, please. Garbart, what about Duveen? No message yet? No, Cleoland. I would have called immediately. Now, hold on a minute. Code message coming through. Decipher it as it comes through and read it to me quickly. Rocky Jones scheduled to leave tomorrow at dawn. Do not worry. Ship will never blast off. We'll report when my mission is completed. Good news, Garbart. I'll be waiting patiently to hear that the orbit jet has been blown up. Yes, Cleolanta. Rocky Jones, the late space ranger.
Rock, what's going on? This choker was trying to sneak into the ship with this detonator. He could have blown up every rocket and us with it if the electronic detector hadn't been set up around the ship. And so he's the reason all the sirens went on. Well, who is he? Have a look. Get a real surprise. Why, it's Duveen. One of our civilian employees. Jupiter, is this guy ever in a position to be loaded with information? Take Duveen to the Provo Marshal. I wonder who Duveen was working for and how much information he's already relayed to them. Well, we'll soon know. That's what I'm afraid of. Let's get back to Secretary Drake and report him. Huh? Sure. Station X07. I consider it a great pleasure to disintegrate the orbit jet in uh, mid space. Another time, perhaps. Atlas San, I think I'll attend the Interplanet Peace Conference. Why, that's insane, Cleolanta. Don't you realize how dangerous it would be for you to go there? Go? I'm not going anywhere. The Peace Conference diplomats are coming here. I'm only the pilot. Ask the navigator. Um, well, we're about, uh, um, we're, uh, we're well on our way. <laughs> Let's see now. We're going faster than escape velocity. We've left the Earth's atmosphere. We've been out, uh, 16 hours. So that would be... Hold the calculations, Bobby. Don't embarrass Venus. She might pile us into a meandering moon just to get even. <laughs> XV-2 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. XV-2 calling Space Affairs Headquarters. Come in, please. Space Affairs Headquarters, Drake speaking. Come in, XV-2. 
Reporting, sir. Orbit jet in top flying condition. Passengers and crew enjoying smooth and uneventful flight. Thanks for calling, Rocky. I don't mind telling you I feel relieved. You should be about a third of the way by now. Just about, sir. And Rocky, be careful. We will, sir. Out. Come in, Atlasan. Reporting for instructions, Cleolana. Sit down. Who's going with you? Magni. Good. He knows when to be tough, and he has the strength of three men. What about the ship? Completely serviced, and a full complement of battle equipment. Excellent. Garbart just intercepted a conversation between Rocky Jones and Secretary Drake. Where's Rocky now? About one-third of the way, so we have plenty of time. Here's the plan. You're to proceed immediately to Space Station X-07, but stay outside our radar deck scanning range. Is that clear? Mm-hmm. If I leave now, I should get there before Rocky does. Under no circumstances is he to know you're there. After he's landed his passengers, he'll take off for Paratane. And after he leaves, we'll give them our little surprise party. <laughs> conference will last, Rocky. Well, Dr. Tyson said about 72 hours. That gives us plenty of time to go to Paratane and back. In fact, we should have a whole day there with nothing to do but sleep. A day off and you want to sleep? Space Station X07, come in. Space Station X07, Andrews speaking, come in please. Andrews, this is Rocky Jones in the orbit jet. Approaching Space Station X07 with classified cargo. When we get within range of your magnetic couplers, notify us to turn off power so you can pull us in. Wilco, out. Out. Well, Winky, we're nearly there. Can't be too soon for me. I hope you realize how important this assignment is to our future. Operation Surprise, go ahead. Rocky Jones has contacted Space Station X07 and will land shortly. We've been keeping out of scanning range, awaiting your orders. Now listen carefully. I'll tell you as soon as the orbit jet leaves for Paratane. When I call back, you're to move in on the space station immediately. There won't be a second to lose. Well, I don't think we should let the orbit jet get away. I think we should destroy it once and for all. I'll do the thinking. You obey orders. Is that clear? Orders will be obeyed. Out. I can't thank you enough. We can all be thankful we arrived safely. And ahead of schedule, too. This means you and your crew will have more time to relax at Paratane. We'll see you here in three days, sir. And uh, good luck on the conference. Thank you. Don't forget to come back in 72 hours. Right. Goodbye, gentlemen. Bye, Roger. Bye, Roger. Bye.
that kind of a takeoff to an Earth blast off. Oh, that's too easy, Bobby. That kind of takeoff is kids' play. I meant for passengers, but for pilots like us, give me a blast off any day. <laughs> XB2 calling Space Station X07. Come in, please. X07. Notify our destination of approximate arrival time. Yes, sir. Out. Quinky, when we get to Paratain, I think I'll catch up on my sleep. Not really. You haven't closed your eyes for so long, I'd begun to think you didn't have eyelids. I wouldn't have interrupted, sir, but you refused to talk with anyone else. This is Dr. Tyson speaking. Come in, please. Dr. Hillary Tyson? Yes. Dr. Tyson, we have a barrage of warhead missiles aimed at the space station. Who is this and what do you want? I will introduce myself when I arrive. Order your space station operator to guide us in for a safe landing at once. Or I will destroy the entire island. But I'll give you 30 seconds. If you do not cooperate, we'll release the barrage. What shall I say? Gentlemen, I'm afraid we have no choice. We have decided to cooperate. Oh, and Dr. Tyson, don't be foolish enough to contact anyone, as our communication band would pick it up. And you'd all be dead before you ever got an answer. What do you intend to do with us? Once we've landed, I'll let you know. Oh, and Dr. Tyson, after we've landed, part of our crew will remain in the ship with instructions to destroy anyone who does not cooperate. Order your operator to guide us in immediately. Out. Do as he says, Andrews. Yes, Dr. Tyson. Unidentified ship. The magnetic coupler has picked you up. Then bring us in. Turn off your power. Power off. I'm pulling you in. on Paratane. I thought I told you to pack your lipstick. Lipstick is a temporary measure. Beauty parlors are permanent. Mm. I hope there aren't any. Winky, you sound just like Rocky. Why not? Because you made a bad pun. Now you sound like yourself. Lena, have you checked to see if we're holding a true course? Paratane, straight ahead. Boy, oh boy. You know, the wonderful thing about Winky is he enjoys just thinking about the fun he's going to have, even if he never has it. You don't mean to tell me that you're planning some skullduggery-like work to spoil my vacation, do you? I was only kidding, Winky. You better be. My vacation's going to be as peaceful as... well, as peaceful as the Interplanet Peace Conference. next week, same time, same station, when we again take you into outer space for further adventures with Rocky Jones, Space Ranger.